You have said that there is a crisis happening at the southern border right now. President Biden started to try to push this massive immigration bill through Congress. But what is the best way to tackle this issue right now at the U.S.-Mexico border? Well, we are. Uh, unfortunately, we are in a crisis along that southwest border. And we see that not only by the number of illegal apprehensions per day and per month, but also by the actions that the federal government is taking in building tent facilities and redeploying law enforcement officers. So they are certainly in a crisis, and it's unfortunate because it's a crisis that has been self-imposed uh, that the Biden administration has done by reversing a number of these policies and decisions. Look, at the end of the day, you need strong enforcement of current law, and that's what's not going on right now. You need to send a signal to those smugglers and those traffickers and other cartels that are shuttling people uh, through their corridors in Mexico to that southwest border. You need to send a signal that the border is not open. And then you can certainly start doing some of the other reforms that uh, Congress has talked about over the over the past several years, closing loopholes uh, and, and looking at a perhaps an a extensive aid package for Central America. There's a number of things that you can do legislatively, but it starts with some strong enforcement, some strong language to send a signal that the border is not open. That's how you stop the surge that is currently going. Um, and again, switching gears, the uh, Biden administration put some sanctions on a number of Russian officials in response to the nearly fatal nerve agent attack on Alexei Navalny and his subsequent jailing. Do you think this is a good step? Yeah, absolutely. So anytime that you're able to take some uh, strong measures. Uh, we saw that not only with these sanctions in the Trump administration, we also sanctioned uh, Russian um, officials uh, throughout uh, the tenure of that administration as well. So I think we need to be strong, not only with Russia, but with China as well. Uh, so there are some uh, positive signs that the Biden administration uh, is moving along that route. I would say there's also some troubling signs or some signs that we're really not sure where they're going. So obviously, the Nord Stream 2 pipeline is of concern when we talk about Russia um, and, and some other initiatives that, uh, that they have with China as well. So I think there's some early, some good signs that the Biden administration is making, but also uh, they need to be a little bit more clear on a couple of other areas regarding both Russia and China. Uh, on the issue of China, at this point, it looks like President Biden has mostly just kept uh, former President Trump's policies in place. Is that the right move here? Well, I think so. I think that's a good start. Uh, but obviously, nothing is static. Uh, so as events emerge uh, and take place, the Biden administration is going to need to be proactive about how they message this. So again, when we left uh, administration, we gave them a playbook on a lot of initiatives that we had with China and stances, positions. I think they've continued some of those, not all, but most of them. Uh, and they need to talk a little bit more proactively uh, about that. I think, again, messages thus far are good, uh, but you gotta continue that and you can't simply rely on what we did in the Trump administration. It's a good blueprint, uh, but they need to come out on their own um, and start talking about some of the abuses in China, some of their trade practices uh, and other things. Uh, we have time for one more question. Uh, on the issue of cybersecurity, Russia's thought to be behind that, that massive solar winds hack that we saw. Uh, just how vulnerable do you think government computer systems are right now? And, and what can possibly be done to, to make them a little bit more secure? Well, I, I would say, I would start with saying there's been a lot of work over the last several years, not only with the Department of Homeland Security, but our interagency partners, the department's interagency department as well. So there's been a lot of progress over the last several years to try to secure federal networks, U.S. government federal networks, and that, that work continues. Uh, CISA, which is our cybersecurity and infrastructure security agency at the Department of Homeland Security, is leading the way in that. They've gotten some additional authorities here in a recently passed uh, piece of legislation. So I think that uh, work will continue. There's more work to be done here for sure. Uh, so we've got to open the aperture between and, and collaborate more extensively between the federal government and the private sector. The private sector uh, is obviously leading in the forefront of cybersecurity. Uh, a lot of the events, a lot of the threats, and a lot of the breaches usually happen in the private sector sphere before they hit the federal government networks. And so we need to open that uh, communication channel a little bit uh, wider 
uh, and make sure that we continue to have uh, good comms there. And I think that will lead to other innovations that uh, that we can do on the federal side as well. Is there anything though that like keeps you up at night when you think about kind of a worst case scenario when it comes to cybersecurity? Yeah, well, I think what we saw the hack that, that you referenced in December is certainly uh, one of the worst case scenarios. Uh, making sure that you are having adversaries inside your network for a period of time that go undetected. I, you know, there's not much that's worse. Uh, fortunately, what what this incident was was more espionage than than them trying to uh, change or to take uh, advantage of that access in order to change certain systems or to do certain nefarious things. It looked like it was just intelligence collecting more than anything else. But that is certainly a, a worst case scenario. I think we also, uh, you know, talked about or, or saw in Florida about some cyber breaches to some of their water supply systems. That's obviously uh, something that we looked at at the Department of Homeland Security, making sure that critical infrastructure remains safe and protected. These are the things that Americans use every day from electricity to water. Um, and so that obviously is, is very concerning as well, because that's going to have immediate impact uh, if that is breached or hacked. All right, Chad Wolf, former acting secretary for the Department of Homeland Security. Thanks for watching the Heritage Foundation's YouTube channel. With more than half a million members, we are the nation's largest conservative research and education institution. We believe the principles and ideas of the American founding are worth conserving and renewing. Please help us further our mission by subscribing to this channel and sharing our videos with your family and friends.